All right, so he's on his way. He will make it up very soon. But before that, we're going to proceed for the next one. Please welcome keynote speaker, Dr. Mithunjay Chaube. Put your hands together for Dr. Mithunjay Chaube, Global Vice President, Sustainability and Environment, UPL Limited. Please put your hands together for Dr. Mithunjay Chaube ji. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mithun Chaube is sustainability, environmental, and water and water, wastewater treatment expert of international repute. He has done PhD in environmental engineering from Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Delhi. He has nearly 24 years of professional working experience in renowned MNCs, Shell, Unilever, UPL, and many more. Dr. Chaube has made an unique position in corporate world by invading sustainability and reducing the environmental footprint of big protection. Please put hands together here all over to Dr. Mithunjay Chaube. Please put hands together, everybody. Please welcome this wonderful speaker in the house. Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me thank Perfect Group to organizing this seminar. I think uh, this is a perfect composition also that uh, we have a member from the statutory bodies like MOEF, CPCB. Also, we have a member of the consultants group and uh, from industry. So uh, I think whenever we drive sustainability or any environmental agenda, then all three uh, needs to be together and uh, all the view from the all three, very good. I think any member from the NGOs are also there because they are also one of the important part of our discussion and uh, our things. So uh, fine. I think uh, uh, I shall take this time, uh, I shall be very brief because several presenters are there. Uh, here I shall take this opportunity to share uh, how we are driving sustainability at UPL. And uh, especially after Paris Agreement on Climate Change, uh, we have changed our uh, strategy at UPL. And uh, we brought uh, uh, four sustainability goals uh, in 2015-16. And one of important goals that was number one was reducing environment footprint. And in 2016, we have taken target as an entire global group of UPL that we will reduce 30% environment footprint by 2020 and uh, environment footprint uh, means for us uh, carbon emission, water consumption, <coughs> wastewater discharge and hazardous waste disposal. So all four together, uh, everything should be 30% uh, reduction in five years. And uh, uh, we achieved nearly in, in some of the area we have even achieved more than 30 percent and uh, some of area slightly one two percent here or there but we have achieved uh, in 2019-20 again in 2019-20 we have taken the next target that from 1920 baseline we will reduce further 25 percent by 2025 and and that uh, uh, work going on and um, I think we are uh, uh, at par uh, whatever our targets are we used to communicate uh, every year at a start of year to all our plant globally 
and uh, the the fear of uh, uh, this one in uh, this uh, seminar which is uh, best practices pollution load assessment life cycle assessment risk assessment carbon footprinting i feel that this is a exercise which need daily and at upl if you set the mechanism we have set we used to do assessment on daily basis we have two group one group in each and every plant we have environment team and they used to assess the pollution load and also the carbon footprinting and the risk assessment on daily basis and at corporate where i used to head globally so every month without fail all the plant used to report uh, all the pollution load all the carbon footprinting risk assessment and on monthly basis at corporate we used to take and try to see that which plant is meeting the target which plant is not meeting the target and then we involve the discussion and uh, try to see that uh, they achieve the target and i think uh, the targeting and the reporting that helped us a lot in achieving the environmental footprint reduction and uh, other benefit of uh, uh, means in my opinion uh, sustainability is for the profitability of business and and what we have found that in a five year uh, we have reduced nearly 30% our environment footprint and the reduction in the carbon means reduction in energy bill reduction in water bill reduction in the waste disposal bill today if you see at upl we have estimated nearly 45 million us dollar saving per year because of all these reduction before upl i was at unilever and at unilever also i was nearly 5 year global sustainability in charge and there i used to look nearly 500 factories and there also my personal experience is that between 2010 to 2015 five year of time uh, we have uh, reduced nearly 50% environment footprint of all the 500 factories of unilever and there our assessment was that nearly 100 million us dollar get saved because of reduction in the water bill energy bill and the waste bill so based upon this two company experience i can say uh, that uh, we have the data that sustainability is for the profitability of business now going to uh, ahead to the presentation uh, uh, this is about uh, uh, our company upl and uh, i am their global vice president and looking environment sustainability and green cell and uh, you can see the presentation uh, we are fifth largest agrochemical company in the world and we are also logo holder of responsible care and ftsc for good uh, and uh, three uh, important international sustainability index one is dow jones sustainability index djsi uh, second is the sustainalytics from the netherland and third is the ftsc from the london stock exchange all three international rating agency has rated upl number 1 globally among the agrochemical companies and our presence is more than 130 countries and uh, we have committed carbon neutrality by 2040 to our all global operation so so we, we have made public commitment that by 2040 we will achieve the carbon neutrality now this is the uh, sustainability framework which we have applied at upl especially after paris agreement on climate change and uh, as i mentioned in the beginning that uh, we brought a lot of changes at upl after paris agreement on climate change and this is the sustainability framework uh, which we have implemented at upl 
And in this sustainability framework, first is we have set a, a global sustainability goals. And under goal, you can see here, first goal is reduce environment footprint, which I have already discussed that first five year, our target was reduce 30% environment footprint. And now again, we have taken further 25% reduction by 2025. So UPL is talking in 10 year of time, 55% reduction of environmental footprint. And uh, then second is enhance uh, world food security. So uh, under this uh, enhance world food security, our sustainability goal is by 2025, uh, product portfolio in our operation should be more than 50% from the sustainable and differentiated product. So now uh, we are number one globally among the biological. So we are changing our product portfolio more toward the biological than the chemical. Also, we are bringing some of the innovative product like one is the Jiva, which is a popular and Jiva is a product which used to reduce the 15 to 25 percent water consumption in agriculture. So wherever it gets used. Like way, several innovative product we are bringing and our aim is that by 2025, more than 50% product portfolio will be from the sustainable and differentiated product. Our third goal is enhance uh, sustainable sourcing. So we are working a lot on the sustainable sourcing. And um, uh, at this moment of time, we have taken target that by 2025, at least 60% sourcing must be from the sustainable sources. And the fourth goal is, goal is uh, a strength in community well-being and and they are uh, we are aiming that more than three million people we will impact through our uh, csr activities under global reporting um, uh, we used to follow gri standard and uh, every year we put our sustainability report in public domain and it is third party assured by the kpmg and also we are in process of releasing our TCFD report. So very soon within one or two months of time in coming dates, we will reduce our, we will release our TCFD report of UPL in public domain. Also, we are closely working with the WBCSD and also the UN Global Compact. Uh, under global certification, we are the RC logo holders and also FTSE for good logo holders. And uh, these both agency used to do the audit of our operation uh, at every two year of time. So they have helped us a lot, a lot to improve and also monitor the progress of uh, uh, environmental standards and implementation of sustainability policy. And last is global uh, rating. So we used to participate in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, FTSC Russell, and Sustainalytics. And all these three international rating agency has rated UPL number one among the agrochemical companies globally. Now, this is the uh, some of the performance, five-year performance of UPL under ESG rating by international rating agency. So if you see first DJSI, you can see there is a 214% improvement in last five year. Uh, and FTSC Russell, 112% improvement in the rating in last five year. And Sustainalytics, here why it's reducing because it is the risk reduction. So minimum is better. And there also we have reduced a lot of risk um, under sustainalytics rating. So this is our performance. And today, one important thing I want to share that uh, UPL is the only agrochemical company in the world who have been listed in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index Sustainability Yearbook. So in sustainability yearbook, no other company, even globally four companies are bigger than us but they are not listed in the sustainability yearbook. Uh, we are the only agrochemical company who have been listed.
This is our performance, uh, just one year performance, uh, April 2021 to March 2022. And I have uh, uh, projected here relative uh, performance that from last year, 2020-21 as compared what we have uh, done in the just year which has been passed. And we have reduced uh, water consumption 11% in one year of time as compared to last year. And uh, we have reduced 7% carbon emission as compared to last year. And we have reduced 17% a specific waste as compared to last year. Today, our two largest operating plant, one at Jagadia and another at Ankleswar, they are using 24% uh, uh, renewable energy. And uh, two things we have taken. Uh, one is zero dependency on the groundwater. And in 2015-16, our dependency was very high on the groundwater, but we have taken target and given the target to all our operation globally that let's have zero dependency on the groundwater. And today I am happy to say that uh, when we review this year performance of all our global uh, 43 to 45 operating plant, then we found that only 1% now dependency of UPL is on the groundwater. And why we are doing this? Because uh, we personally feel that uh, groundwater use is one of going to be a major conflict between the corporate and community. So, so let's uh, use as minimum as possible groundwater. So today our dependency is 1% and I am sure that our target is by 2025, zero dependency. But I am sure that the next year we will announce that we are using zero groundwater inside our operation. And the second drive we are taking, zero dependency on the CETP. And why we have taken this? In 15-16, if you see, uh, we were connected with all the CETP. But uh, what um, our thought process is that CETP operation is one of the major challenges. And since variation in the affluent characteristics comes and also the skilled operation is the problem. So always issue happens to be with CATP. So what we are doing, we have made our strategy that let's have zero dependency on the CATP and wherever we, our connection is with the CATP, we are pursuing ZLD there. And uh, uh, because and maximum reuse recycle we are doing and if at all some of the effluent stream we not able to um, do the recycle reuse then there we are uh, uh, pursuing JLD but our target is zero dependency on the CATP at this moment now 16% our dependency is. Now, this uh, important things uh, I want to figure, the, I want to show that uh, uh, sustainability is for the profitability of business, not only by reducing the environment footprint, but also nowadays help to attract the investment. And last year, uh, we discussed with uh, some of the international banks and we got uh, sustainability linked loan. 1.5 billion US dollar and uh, those loan are linked with the sustainability performance of UPL and we have given them commitment that by 2025 we will reduce 25 percent our environment footprint as compared to 1920 and uh, if we will achieve then only the subsidized rate is applicable and if we will not achieve then they will increase the rate of interest and uh, we got last year 1.5 billion us dollar um, sustainability linked green loan and okay so i think uh, here you can see the performance whatever the target set for the 2021 22 by the bank and last is the actual uh, what we have achieved in 21 22 so you can see that uh, our present sustainability performance is better than committed performance for 1.5 billion US dollar. So, so that's how uh, our performance is going on. And these all get audited by these banks. 
because if they have given the sustainability linked loan 1.5 billion so you can see that how many kind of uh, assessment uh, and all the data verification those banks may be doing and in those verification we came out that the, our performance is better than what the target we have taken now uh, some of the technology uh, i will just share that uh, recently we have implemented many more green sustainable technology and uh, we have one dedicated green cell we have created inside upl a global um, platform green cell and there we have number of engineers biologists technocrats working only for the implementation of green sustainable technology inside upl and aim is by those technological intervention we can reduce our environment footprint and and green cell also reports to me so here i want to share uh, although there are number of technology we have implemented but related to waste water treatment i want to share four technologies which we found very good and the successful in last uh, one two year and we have got five patent also uh, from the green cell so one uh, good technology we uh, i want to share with you about a scale van so a scale van is a technology which we used inside cooling tower and in cooling tower you can directly take the treated waste water and you can recycle the water as high as up to 150000 ppm tds so uh, a lot of reduction of fresh water happens in cooling tower and uh, cooling tower is one of the major water user inside the chemical industry second good technology we came across is the volut and uh, volut is a very good sludge dewatering technology and uh, we have implemented inside our etp and this is a very compact and very less power consumption happen with the volut and it's work 24 hour and uh, very good technology for the sludge dewatering a uh, third is the vacuum distillation this vacuum distillation just recently we have implemented at our haldia plant first uh, technology and uh, the beauty of vacuum distillation is that uh, it's consume one third energy while doing the uh, evaporation so if you want to use multi effect evaporator then me uses a lot of power and then the carbon emission is associated so this uh, vacuum distillation is replacement of me and uh, our experience is that it consume one third energy as compared to multi effect evaporator so this vacuum distillation is one of the very good technology a uh, last one is the forward osmosis technology fo technology this we have implemented i think first time in the chemical industry we have implemented and we have implemented at unit 1 ankleshwar it's working very successful from last two year and uh, this is the technology where we don't able to treat with the conventional activated sludge process or biological treatment process our waste water suppose your tds is higher in range of 50000 60000 ppm your cod is in range of 15000 20000 ppm then those who are expert of the waste water they may understand that 50000 tds 15000 cod not possible to treat with the conventional biological treatment so there only one uh, thing is there that you do the uh, uh, you use the me and then treat it and a lot of carbon emission happen a lot of energy consumption happen we brought this new technology fo and forward osmosis help us to treat those stream very well and uh, by implementing we reduce our operating cost inside our operation for the wastewater treatment now this is the many more things are there so i will quickly conclude but this this is very important things which i want to share uh, at upl uh, what we found problem that uh, the 
uh, a strategy of collecting all the effluent at one place and treating with one ETP that doesn't work in the especially in chemical and agrochemical company because we have variation of a stream and different kind of a stream we get generated so we implemented uh, affluent identification segregation and then treatment and broadly we have classified our all affluent stream into three category uh, green stream yellow stream and red stream and by quantity if you ask our practical experience is that 70 percent are green stream which is very easy to treat with the biological treatment and 20 percent are yellow stream which difficult to treat but the technology like forward osmosis we are using or oh radical we are using at our columbia plant so by that way we can treat and only 10 percent difficult effluent red stream we get which is very difficult to treat with any technology so we have adopted the strategy that let's segregate it into green yellow and red and then apply the appropriate technology and then treat it and this a scheme which i am sharing with you this we have implemented in all our upl technical manufacturing plant and a very good result we are getting not only we are achieving uh, all the treatment standards but a lot of water we are doing recycling reuse and also the our operating cost get reduced that is a very important that when you segregate and use appropriate technology there happens to be reduction in the operating cost uh, this is the one case study recently in unit one ankleswar we have implemented zld and uh, why we have implemented zld if you ask personally from me i always used to tell that zld is not an environment friendly technology and i have published one paper also in indian chemical council journal even last year i have published one book um, waste water treatment technology design considerations and that has been published by wiley publication usa they are also one entire chapter i have devoted on the how jdld is not a environment friendly but uh, here in unit one why we have implemented because i told you that we want to uh, uh, reduce our dependency on the CETP and uh, why it is because every 15 day maybe one month two months of time we found that some line some line from the CETP going to deep sea discharge they leaked and those are not in our control those are in association control and when the line gate leaked then just one liner come to us from the GPCB that please stop all your effluent going outside, even the treated effluent going outside. And uh, any industry, if you see the storage capacity, we don't have more than two days, three days of storage. And if you have asked us to stop the wastewater going outside of premises for 15 days, 10 days, then we have to shut down our operation after two days, three days. So based upon the business interest, we have decided that let's implement JDLD in unit one. But when we implemented last year JDLD in our unit one in Kleswar, then what I want to share here with you that we have adopted a two, three strategy by which we reduce our energy consumption and we have reduced our operating cost also. Because in the interest of environment, if we are using more energy, if we are doing more carbon emission, then that is not a environment friendly technique. So we have applied one is the identification, sampling and characterization of effluent. So same philosophy, what I have explained to you, uh, effluent segregation. And then uh, we have adopted some of the uh, innovative technology uh, uh, and especially in IKI effluent, we have uh, adopted a different kind of approach to treat it. and then forward osmosis we have implemented a scale band we have implemented and you can see that uh, if we have not implemented these technologies
then our operating cost happens to be nearly 1932 per cubic meter but since we have adopted a different approach so today our operating cost of zld is 1120 rupees i think 20 20 rupees per cubic meter so nearly 50 percent cost reduction and nearly 50 percent energy consumption uh, uh, we achieved while implementing the zld at unit one similarly in at wapi unit unit zero there also we have implemented zld only with with that concept that they are also cetps are there always problem happen so so let's uh, reduce the dependency on the cetp but there also we have adopted innovative approach and uh, there we are achieving um, at lesser cost zld and 1300 rupees per cubic meter and if we have not adopted this uh, strategy and approach then with conventional system it may end with 2000 uh, rupees per cubic meter so these are the some of the technology where right now we are working and this year we have taken the uh, goal to implement this at uh, green cell and uh, one is hydrodynamic cavitation so there we are working and we found this technology very good energy efficient and also difficult a uh, stream we can treat uh, second is photo detoxification so there also we are working and uh, uh, photo detoxification is a, a special interest for me because when I was using, uh, uh, when I was pursuing doctorate at IIT Delhi, then this was my favorite topic of photo detoxification. So that we are going to implement uh, inside our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, in dense system, they are uh, in, in a biological system, uh, especially activated sludge process or MBBR, uh, when we want to. Uh, reduce the energy consumption inside the aeration tank then indense system is a very good technique and that uh, we are hoping this year to implement and uh, then green hydrogen right now we are working on the green hydrogen and uh, our uh, strategy is this year we are going to put a pilot plant for the one megawatt and uh, our uh, one of the unit jagadia uh, we use hydrogen and ammonia as a raw material. So first our strategy is to get hydrogen and ammonia and directly use inside plant. And later on, our strategy is to convert entire power plant and run on the hydrogen energy. But uh, it's too early. Uh, it is at concept stage. We are working and we are hopeful that we will implement going forward uh, green hydrogen. Now, this is the book which I was talking to you last year. Uh, I have written one book and that get published by the Wiley publication uh, at the same time from the UK and the US office of uh, Wiley publication. Wiley publication is 200 old, very big publishing house and renowned publishing house. The name of this book is Wastewater Treatment Technologies Design Considerations. And in this book, um, it is not a, like a conventional book. Uh, one unique feature in this book is that more than 30 kind of industry where my personal experience happens to be, I have summarized the affluent characteristics. So if anyone want to design directly, the all design data can be taken from there. And then I have outlined several latest advanced technology design also in this book like a scale band forward osmosis volute uh, oh radical you cannot found in any uh, right now conventional book so that i have summarized in this book and i have tried that the uh, one person who have a basic knowledge in the wastewater treatment they can also use to design the plant. So that kind of design methodology has been summarized in this book. And the uh, zero liquid discharge, there I have devoted one full chapter, uh, how it's not environment friendly, but uh, still in some of the cases, if needed, we can implement it. And the last chapter is devoted on the operational excellence. So very good for the operator, how to operate the best water treatment. And it's available on almost all e-commerce site. Uh, Amazon also, it's uh, available very easily. 
Uh, now uh, uh, I shall conclude, but before concluding, uh, let me talk about the SDGs. At UPL, uh, among 17 SDGs, we have prioritized five SDGs. And based upon these five SDGs, we have also UPL sustainability goal by 2025. And you can see here, reduce environment footprint, enhance world food security, enhance sustainable sourcing, a strengthen community well-being, and you can see the target also. So I don't want to devote much more time because already at a start of time, I have explained this target and goal of the UPL. So last, this is the last slide. And uh, uh, where uh, right now, going ahead at UPL, we are focusing uh, on environmental sites. We are focusing on the scope 3 emission calculation. So now our scope 3 emission calculation is ready. And um, we are going to publish in one, two months of time. Also, we have set our science-based target. And that also we, we are going to uh, publish in public domain that what will be our science-based target. And uh, TCFD report is also already prepared and in coming two, three months, you will see in the public domain, TCFD report of the UPL and sustainable sourcing. There we have done a lot of work and we are focusing on social front. Uh, we are focusing on reduce our uh, uh, LTIFR and uh, also we are uh, focusing on the um, audit uh, of all our safety data because safety is very important for us. We are using Jexcon software uh, uh, to reduce our safety risk inside our plant. And also we are focusing on reducing the attrition rate. Today, the attrition rate is also one of the problems, uh, especially in the chemical industry, because a lot of uh, boom has come in India, especially after China problem. So um, attrition rate, to reduce the attrition rate, we are focusing. And on governance uh, front, um, we are focusing that let's have a, a specific tax reporting for every region. It's not a global. Every region, how much tax we are paying to the government, let it go in the public domain. Also, on gender diversity, we are focusing at board level as well as inside plant also. Because in chemical industry, if you see as a whole, the gender diversity is not looking very good. So UPL is now going ahead, focusing on uh, those front. And uh, customer satisfaction index, that is also a very important for us. And there we are focusing on governance front. And uh, ISO 27001 implementation in all our IT infrastructure. Because we feel that the cyber security is very important for any company and that we are going to focus in coming days. So I think this uh, on ESG, you can see environment, social governance, we are going ahead. We want to focus that I have shared with you. And uh, with that, I shall end my presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, sir. Such a long and knowledgeable session. Now I want to request Mr. Praveen Bhagrawaji, please come on stage and please felicitate keynote speaker, Dr. Mithunjay Chaubeji. And can we have huge applause, everybody? Thank you so much, Dr. Mithunjay Chaubeji, for this wonderful session. It was so knowledgeable, inspiring, at the same time, very connecting. Thank you. Well, next, our special invitee in the house, Professor Dr. Akarathiji, please come on stage and 